Well, hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Daisy McAndrew and I've got the great honour of hosting this series of videos on behalf of Sherman and Sterling, looking at the ramifications, the after effects of that referendum vote on Britain leaving the EU. And for this um, subject specifically, we're going to be looking at Brexit and funds. And I'm delighted to be joined by John Adams. John, this is your area of expertise. Funds and fund managers, should they be fretting, unnecessarily worrying, or is this a time for cool heads? So, I mean, there's been an awful lot said in the last couple of weeks um, about uh, the consequences of Brexit, about fund managers possibly fleeing the city and moving en masse to Frankfurt or Dublin. Um, but actually, I think it is a time for cool heads. When you, when you break it down, when you, when you look at uh, different managers on a business-by-business -business basis, on a structure-by-structure -structure basis, actually the consequences um, are possibly not, not as dramatic as one might think. And even where some managers are affected, uh, for example, in particular UK managers, uh, there are workarounds that we think those managers can take advantage of. Uh, in order to uh, mitigate the consequences. Well, that's interesting because um, obviously, if we let, let's take those UK managers um, first off, what are the potential problems they're facing, and what are the potential answers to those problems? So, UK managers right now, to the extent that they manage European funds, they benefit from this thing called the marketing passport, which entitles them to market their funds very freely across mm. the European mm. Union. Uh, as soon as we're out of the European Union, um, assuming we're also out of the single market, UK fund managers would lose access to those passports. That said, there are, that sounds dramatic, right? But there are mechanisms in the legislation already which um, permit these passports to be extended to third countries, i.e. the UK once it's outside of the EEA. Yeah. Uh, and should that happen, actually a UK manager wanting to utilise this passport would find itself in much the same position as it um, is in currently. So let's assume worst case scenario, just to be you know, a, a bit on the gloomy side. Um, is that the, what is the worst case scenario? So worst case scenario is uh, we leave the EEA, the UK leaves mm. the EEA, there's no special deal, we're treated as a third country much like the US or the Cayman Islands or, or, or any other country outside, outside Europe. Uh, and in that situation, um, we would lose access to these passports, the managers would supposedly, um, because there's no deal. But there are workarounds, as I say, there's this yeah. extension of the passport, even, even other potential workarounds. You know, it's possible to use an existing entity that a manager has in another country as the sort of named manager, the AIFM of, of a particular fund, and then delegate that management back to the UK. It's a perfectly well-trodden path. People do it right now. US managers do it all the time, and it would enable business as usual to a, to a large extent. It would mean that your, your key personnel, your investment professionals, could stay in, in London, could carry on doing what they've been doing for years without having to move to, say, Dublin or Paris. So you're saying the worst case scenario really isn't that bad. So what's the advice um, now, whilst we're in this hiatus and we don't know which scenario we're going to end up with, what's the advice for clients? Uh, it's, it's a very good question. There's a number of things that they can do. The first is to look at their individual structures and work out how the worst case scenario would affect them and whether, for example, relying on this extension of a passport would be the best way to go or whether or not it's possible to utilize a, an entity that you have in, say, Luxembourg. Um, another thing to do is to certainly check the fund documents right now for things like references to the European Union. Mm. Managers are subject to investment restrictions that might say, for example, you know, less than 20% 20, 20 of um, investments can be outside the European Union, but it's hugely exposed to the UK. So as soon as the UK leaves the European Union, you know, it's in danger of breaching that investment restriction. So things like that uh, a manager can do right now. Um, it's, it's good form, it's very prudent to just look at your documents and work out um, where these references to the European Union might bite. Yeah. Well, very good advice, very good practical advice, things that um, people can be getting on with. And I guess the, but the main message is don't panic. It really doesn't look that bad. Uh, that's right. I mean, for some, it's all structure by structure, unfortunately. For some managers, there will be some restructuring that has to happen. Um, but certainly the, the dramatic kind of alarmist messages that one sees sometimes, I think, I think that you know, once you delve into the detail, there are workarounds uh, and there's reason to be very optimistic. 
Well, that is music to our ears. John Adams, thank you very much thank indeed. You.